There's a lot of fan conversation going on with Montez Ford and Bianca Belair. So we'll see what's going on there. We'll also check out some things going on with Rikishi and the Bloodline. Let's start things off with a growing conversation with Bianca Belair and Montez Ford. Because fans have been throwing around some ideas and making the conversation very interesting. So in order to get this conversation going, we have to revisit the June 2nd edition of Friday Night Smackdown. This edition of Smackdown featured a Money in the Bank qualifier match between LA Knight and Montez Ford. Now, in terms of WWE's presentation of these two characters, Montez Ford was the babyface and LA Knight was the heel for this matchup. But as everyone is starting to become aware of, LA Knight's popularity is skyrocketing across the country with every single arena that he walks into. The fans are just really gravitating towards LA Knight. He's continuing to get massive ovations everywhere he goes. However, he's still technically a heel in WWE's eyes. So LA Knight naturally gets paired up in matches with actual baby faces. Only issue is that since the crowds love LA Knight, that babyface superstar usually ends up getting treated like a heel and gets booed. And that's exactly what happened here during this match between LA Knight and Montez Ford. Despite being the unquestionable babyface, Montez Ford was booed out of the building by the SmackDown crowd that was completely behind LA Knight. And to make matters worse and make it sting even more, LA Knight cheated to win the Money in the Bank qualifier by pulling on the tights and holding the ropes. And he still got cheered after the win. So despite literally cheating and not playing by the rules, LA Knight still gets a big reception and positive reaction from the crowd. And on the flip side, doing everything by the book and playing by the rules, Montez Ford gets booed out of the building and treated like the real villain. And just a few weeks ago, there was that big report about how a heel turn could be on the way for Bianca Belair, Montez Ford, and Angelo Dawkins. So taking that report into consideration and to see how Montez Ford was treated by the June 2nd SmackDown crowd, the fans were discussing the possibility of how this moment here from June 2nd could maybe come up again down the line if Montez does in fact turn heel. If Montez does turn heel later on this year, that could be a date that he remembers and could eventually throw in everyone's face. It may be a bit cliche, but it would work in this match and moment here with the starting point for Montez Ford's heel era. However, it's not like Montez Ford gets booed by every crowd. It was just the LA Knight effect. If you go up against LA Knight right now, considering how over he is, you will get booed. That's just a fact right now. But if it does become a more regular, reoccurring thing that Montez and Angelo are getting booed by more and more crowds, that would really make perfect sense for WWE to capitalize off that with a heel turn for the Street Profits. Same thing goes for Bianca Belair. Bianca was listed in that same report for possibly going through a heel turn later in 2023. But when we talked about that report several weeks ago, the circumstances were much different. Bianca Belair was still champion, and we were discussing how her rumored heel turn could come due to how she's been corrupted and became mad with power, due to letting her long title reign get too much to her head. But now that her title is gone and is no longer around her waist after 420 days, maybe that's what pushes Bianca closer to that breaking point as well. Bianca did everything by the books, tried pleasing the fans, and it all ended with her losing her title. Bianca could possibly even look at Asuka as an example for more motivation to turn heel. Asuka wasn't really going anywhere as a laid-back babyface, but the second she turned heel, gets edgier, and starts cheating in matches, Asuka ends up winning the Raw Women's title. So maybe that's something that Bianca Belair can sit back and pay close attention to, and possibly think to herself that if she starts pulling off those types of stunts, maybe she gets her title back. And maybe that could be the role too. Bianca wouldn't care what the fans think. She would just do whatever it takes to get her title back in her possession. So it leads her down the path of turning heel and using all these cheating tactics to help her reach that goal. She probably figures that if it worked for Asuka, it could work for her too. 
So it's definitely an interesting conversation that's picking up momentum because you had that initial report that said the heel turns were coming for Bianca Belair and the Street Profits in late 2023. And now we can see something that is starting to develop that could potentially take them down that heel route. So it's definitely something to keep an eye on. Bianca suffered that big loss of her title. Montez lost the huge qualifier match and had the fans turn on him. So will this all be little things that send them down the heel path later this year? That's what we'll have to keep an eye on. The Roman Reigns and Bloodline story has been by far WWE's hottest storyline over the last few years and continues to be one of the hottest storylines in current day. A lot of fans were critical of the storyline, especially in the weeks that immediately followed WrestleMania 39. Roman wasn't around that much, things were getting a bit repetitive between Kevin, Sammy, and the Usos, and some fans were still upset that Cody Rhodes didn't win the title at WrestleMania. But once Roman came back, and now we're starting to see the split in the bloodline, those negative fans are starting to come back around and enjoying the story again. But there are some fans that were discussing how the story could have unfolded if Roman did lose his titles at WrestleMania. So the community is a bit split on that conversation, but having this bloodline tension take place with Roman still being the champion appears to be the right move. Some even compare this situation with Roman Reigns to Game of Thrones' Mad King character. The Mad King went more and more insane because of the high position he was in and had all the power he had, and how it continued to just eat him up until he had no self-awareness or control at all. Well, similar idea for Roman Reigns. It's clear that Roman Reigns is becoming more and more insane and mad with power the longer his title reign goes on for. So if he lost the title before the issues with the Usos came up, sure, he would have still been angry and frustrated, but keeping the title on him and having him be so blinded by the title and his own madness during the Bloodline's breakup makes it even more intense. And in other Bloodline-related news, Rikishi, father of the Usos, appears to be teasing a potential return to WWE television to get involved with the Bloodline story. After the Usos and Roman's recent issues really got out of hand, Rikishi took to Twitter and tweeted out the word, ENOUGH. He also posted a gif from the Godfather film with the classic quote of, I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse. And that was all he posted in regards to the recent events of the Bloodline. But it's still a bit cryptic. Is Rikishi comparing Roman Reigns to the Godfather? Is Rikishi applying that he'll be the one to try squash the Bloodline's tension with each other. It's definitely cryptic and unclear, but the fans have really been diving into his tweets, wondering if he will play a role in this story at some point. The Bloodline was supposed to have a family reunion back at Raw 30, but that segment was changed into the Tribal Court segment. So maybe they'll revisit that idea down the line and have some of the Bloodline's family members return for a little visit. But what are your thoughts on today's stories? Leave your comments below. Don't forget to subscribe with all notifications on and leave a like if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, guys.